Hello, people of YouTube, both of you that are going to be watching this. Thank you, I appreciate it. So I'm gonna do something completely different. Um, it does have a little bit to do with planning, um, but it also has uh, just a lot to do with um, life in general. So um, I went skiing a lot last year uh, after my divorce and had a really good time, but in the mountains it's cold. And you know, skiing during the pandemic lockdown quasi um, hysteria that was going on, um, you always had to have a mask on. Um, and of course, when it's cold, you wanna have a mask on. So um, I didn't invest anything. I just had um, this uh, neck muff type of thing that uh, I use primarily for cooler uh, season bike riding. And it's really um, just kinda like a layer of uh, um, just some kind of stretchy fabric. Didn't really keep me warm at all. Um, but um, it did what it did. And I went one time this year and just my face just froze. So I decided um, since I have a ski trip coming up that I would try something a little bit different. Um, so I thought I'd make a fleece muff. And um, the sewing machine that I still have um, is an old Singer 201, which is a great machine, but it's only straight stitch. And if you're going to sew anything with any type of stretchy fabric, you need a... Um, a zigzag stitch of some sort. So I went and picked up this Singer Heavy Duty. Um, it's got the little table that you add on, plus a few tools. Um, most important, seam ripper, and then a pair of scissors. And then of course uh, this machine, um, got it for a great price. So I also went to Goodwill and bought some thrifted um, fleece blankets just to try. So this was like my first prototype just a single layer, um, stretchy this way, so you can get it over your head, um, just to that weird looking uh, fabric. So that was the first one, but I wasn't, I didn't think that was gonna be much better than that single layer. So I um, tried another one just to see if I can get the technique down, and that didn't work, and then so I, I had another blanket and I pulled it together and just flat out struggled on getting the uh, construction technique down. So I abandoned that idea. And then I came up with another prototype of a sort. This is a two layer um, little muff. And again, um, I don't have that many great skills, um, but it's got the thrifted fabric there and the thrifted fabric here turns inside out. Um, so double layer, I think it's going to be plenty warm. And so um, I wanted to make another one that's going to be slightly smaller because this ends up being pretty big, but it will cover not only um, my, you know, face and chin, but also my neck quite well. And um, then could also go up um, underneath my um, ski helmet and kind of protect part of the top of my bald head. So I put together and cut a couple more pieces for this will be prototype five of the same fabric and um, have it all clipped together. One of the things I'm learning about um, using this fleece is this stuff, while it seems to want to stick together, when you're sewing it together, it's going to squirt all over. Um, so I used these binder clips um, to hold it together. I've got it clipped on both sides. So what I'm going to do, this is two pieces with the um, right sides facing each other. So I'm gonna pull this in, I'm gonna sew a simple zigzag stitch, just right down the edge with, you know, a 3 8 to half inch seam allowance. And we'll sew that through there. Oops, oops. So kind of get it set where I want it. Drop this down, I'm gonna take the first clip off. One of the things about these binder clips is compared to like the little um, quilting clips, um, they, they do tend to um, kind of stick on stuff, so I kind of have to pay attention. Um, oh, there's my leg again. Hope I'm not giving you where to go. So I've kind of got it set up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and start. I will start off with uh, a stitch forward. Oops, well. There you go, I didn't pull my tail. So I've got to re-thread. Fortunately, things didn't fall very far. 
maybe. Now, one of the things about now using a modern type sewing machine as compared to um, the old antiques, um, they have some features that really work well for old eyes, like an automatic threader. Now, it might be good for old eyes, but I'm not sure. Sometimes it's fiddly on old fingers. I think we've got it in there. Not quite. There. No, not quite. There. Okay. Got that threaded through. If I can get that out without killing myself. Kind of wrapped around the wrong way. But we'll get it. I'm gonna pull that out. Okay. Got plenty of tail out there. So now let's try this again. Get myself set back up one more time. This is live. Well, not actually live, but you know. Keep a hold of the tail there. Put the back stitches. And I will just go ahead and sew through. Some people that would be more practiced and better at this uh, probably go faster. I'm not so good at this. That's okay. This is kind of therapy for an old guy like me. I'm really liking this modern machine just because it's pretty versatile, seems strong enough for me. You know, <clears throat> I've sewn a few things. I've made, you know, a couple of pair of like sleep pants and uh, dop kits and one messenger bag. And uh, I was always kind of in search of that heavy duty or powerful machine and went through several uh, antique or vintage machines to do that. And uh, just never was quite thrilled with them. Um, it's not like I'm going to be like, still in a saddle or something like that or building shoes, but um, a couple of layers of things. Um, as I worked on this little uh, project, I had to kind of remember some of those sewing techniques that I tend to forget. But you forget if you don't do much very often. And just one more clip and then we'll just keep sewing. here suck down some of that fleece down into the feed dogs and I guess I will pause right now because I'm probably gonna cuss there we go got it loose and go ahead and start back there that this will all be hidden so it's okay but it just kind of sucked down in there and got things kind of messed up so let me go ahead and pull the tail out of the way Go back to past where I was. I guess that now has a super back stitch on it. And then finish this up. Pull out of the way. One of the things that this modern machine has is a little thread cutter. And it didn't take me very long to get used to that for sure. Much easier than grabbing scissors. Okay, so there's that side. I'll go ahead and trim my ends. Get those out of the way. You know, one of the things that when you learn how to sew, they don't tell you later is uh, when you're approaching age 60, how hard it is to see everything. So I'm sitting here, I've got my 
eyeglasses on top of my forehead because, well, um, the bifocal thing doesn't work that great. You, know, you get a stiff neck from having to tilt yourself around. Go ahead and drop that down. Got a hold of my uh, tails back here. And now we'll start this side. Going with some back stitches. And we'll just go. The zigzag stitch I'm using here is just a straight zigzag. Nothing fancy, no lightning stitch, nothing weird. And you do that with these um, stretchy fabrics because that will keep the stitches from tearing when you stretch them. And wearing this muff will go over your head. there but we'll deal with that just blast right on through there and we'll get close to finishing up here So now we have both sides uh, sewn up. Trim my ends real quick. Now we're at that part that um, unless you sew some, it's not that intuitive. So what you want to do is take and turn this inside out. So this will actually be the side that um, we're going to look at. So go ahead and turn it completely inside out. All right, just like that. And then going to kind of fold it back on itself and bring the two raw edges together and then match up the seams there. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull that seam allowance open a little bit and right up this one anyway just put a little clip there to kind of hold it in place while I manipulate this the rest of this around so it kind of just making a another tube we'll be able to then finish this up probably should pull the camera back a little bit or maybe I'll do that Kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm getting the raw edges together, matching up the seams. Again, again, um, I'm not a professional tailor. I don't sew very much. Um, I started back sewing because I bought a inexpensive jacket at one of the um, big box sporting goods stores. The dang thing, every freaking seam along the whole thing just started coming apart. Um, so I got the old 201 loose and had it ready to go and ended up basically sewing all of the stitches um, back on that. And so now it won't fall apart, but they kind of got my juices going and so I was ready to go. So, see we've got the layers here. Um, so it's basically a tube. This um, will turn back inside out again. So you're basically a tube through there. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to sew along this this edge, and I'll leave a little bit of a gap in about in there, so I can turn it back inside out and then sew that up. So let's see what happens. I'll pull the camera a little closer again. I'm going to pull this. Big table out of the way because it's kind of bulky and I'm gonna go ahead and put I could probably just leave the 
free arm out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this little part in. On this particular machine, it's got a cool little feature in this um, part of the table. Flip that open, you got your little tool section, um, extra bobbins and stuff like that. And so I'm kind of getting reset on sewing. Um, I don't quite have that figured out. So I'm gonna leave, um, I don't know, like an, two inches, cause this is pretty bulky, um, open so I can pull it out and you'll witness that. Um, so let me get myself set up here. I'll start like, probably like right about here. And again, sew across with that zigzag stitch. Um, and just sew all the way around it. I'll just feed this through and sew all the way around it and then come back and stop um, and then turn it inside out. Oh, I guess you gotta put that down to make that work. See, there's little things if you don't sew very often, you just kind of forget. Or you can claim you never knew. It's probably more what I am. I just never knew some of this stuff. I'm not real precise on this. I'm not using a seam gauge or measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing alongside my pressure, pressure foot. One of the things about this Singer Heavy Duty is it's got this little clear plate over the bobbin, the drop-in bobbin, so you can see how much um, thread you still have on your bobbin. That way, um, as I sew along the few little projects I make, I, maybe I won't be surprised. Okay. Just a little bit more. ugly it's all right okay and back here is where I started so I'm gonna sew to about here Okay, that should be good and locked in. I'll pull this loose. Cut the thread. Go ahead and pull my tails out. I'm gonna go ahead and trim these real quick. Got a little bit of a mess over here because I forgot to put the presser foot down, so I've got a little bit of a mess here that I'll just clean that up. All right, and now we're going to re-invert it, or invert it, as it were. Get the camera back a little bit more so we can see, so I'm just gonna start Back through that hole that I left, I'm just going to start pulling it back through, pulling and pushing it back through itself. <laughs> okay, now we've got it all pulled out. And I just kind of fool around with a little bit, get it the way I want it. Okay, and the last part I'm gonna have to do is sew up that little hole that I left. 
and I think I'm going to go ahead and try to hand sew it. So I just got to figure that out. So um, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch it. Um, but essentially, I'll sew it kind of inside there, cinch that up, and it'll be closed. And then this is then will be ready to wear, reversible. It's got the softer side of the fleece on both sides. Um, looking at my edges. Well, I did a pretty decent job. A few little puckers in there. Not bad. So I'm uh, pretty pleased with that. I'm pleased with the uh, Singer Heavy Duty uh, machine with the uh, stitches it has there. And um, I hope you have a great day and I hope you found this entertaining and amusing. Um, so if you have coats falling apart or want to make yourself a nice neck gaiter or things like that, um, don't be afraid to grab your old sewing machine and get after it. A 58 year old man, if I could do this, I think almost anyone can. Have a great day.